So indeed, uh, I was very grateful for the invitation of uh, His Excellency the Prime Minister uh, Sheikh Khalid Al Thani to visit Qatar in the context of 25 year anniversary uh, of our bilateral relations, uh, which we celebrate actually on the uh, 13th of June. Uh, and uh, uh, it was, uh, uh, I received a very warm welcome for which I am very grateful. Uh, I was uh, very uh, impressed with the progress uh, that uh, Qatar made uh, in the last several years, uh, uh, both on uh, uh, in gen more generally in economic terms, uh, but also uh, in terms of ensuring the food security of the country uh, and, uh, uh, you know, ensuring uh, the uh, uh, ability to provide uh, food, especially at this uh, very difficult time, uh, also to organize logistics uh, in such an impressive way. And we discussed uh, the ways in which Moldova and the state of Qatar can cooperate more closely, uh, even though we have uh, bilateral relations for 25 years, I think that there is a lot of potential in terms of diversifying our trade, in terms of attracting uh, Qatari investment uh, in the Republic of Moldova, uh, you know, attracting tourism. Um, Moldova is going through a difficult time with the war in Ukraine. Uh, there are uh, economic and social consequences. Uh, we have uh, received a very large number of uh, refugees, uh, but uh, we have shown that we are a small country with a big heart, and despite all the crises, we are moving forward with the uh, uh, necessary reforms uh, to join the European Union and, and become a country that is attractive for investment, including from the state of Qatar. We uh, have a developed uh, bilateral framework, but uh, as always, this can be improved. We have signed a number of agreements over the years. Today, we signed two more. Uh, so uh, one is on uh, uh, visa facilitation, uh, and another one is on cooperation in agricultural area. Uh, so uh, we are also uh, looking forward to make sure that a number of agreements are ratified and enter, enter into force. And uh, there are a number of agreements, including an important one on double taxation that is uh, under negotiation and discussion. So we will certainly uh, move forward with this agenda of improving our uh, framework agreements in order to uh, facilitate uh, the development and the gr improvement uh, of our bilateral relations. So our trade uh, is uh, actually quite small. Uh, it's about $1.5 million in total. So I think that uh, here we have uh, the most room for improvement. Uh, and uh, I know that, uh, uh, you know, there are, for example, feeds uh, uh, for uh, the uh, you know agricultural and livestock se sector uh, that are coming from Moldova. Some of it is disrupted because of the logistics complications in our region and across the world that is due uh, both to the COVID pandemic, but more recently uh, by the war in Ukraine. So uh, you know we 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 have to continue working and. Uh, this is why we uh, scheduled also a meeting with the uh, Qatari uh, Chamber of Commerce. Uh, there were calls uh, with our Ministry of Economy, with our uh, investment agency, and uh, uh, we will continue working together on improving uh, the trade relations uh, between Moldova and Qatar, which, uh, you know, uh, should be uh, a good objective to have given the complementarities of our economies. So we have discussed uh, uh, in terms of uh, areas uh, for cooperation uh, with the Chamber of Commerce, uh, of course, uh, agricultural processing and uh, uh, the uh, food uh, sector in general uh, is uh, a good uh, area of cooperation. Uh, we also 
uh, have uh, tourism potential. Uh, we also uh, have potential in uh, sectors like, um, uh, you know, pharmaceuticals or uh, IT, uh, business process operations. So uh, very soon we will uh, come with a new fiscal policy and we are uh, looking forward to uh, provide even better incentives uh, for uh, businessmen and investment uh, in Moldova. Of course, in terms of uh, uh, purchases uh, from uh, Qatar, you know, we are interested in diversifying our energy sources. Uh, we are interested in uh, improving and increasing uh, our renewable energy um, uh, the, the, the amount of energy that is created from renewable sources. Uh, you know, we uh, have faced a crisis uh, uh, in October uh, in terms of uh, gas provision. So we are now looking to build our reserves, but also to uh, create uh, long-term alternatives um, uh, for uh, gas and electricity. Uh, I congratulated uh, His Excellency the Prime Minister for the uh, progress uh, that uh, the state of Qatar has made in preparation of the World Cup. Uh, it is quite an achievement to host uh, the World Cup, uh, the first uh, uh, from the Gulf countries and in the Middle East. And, uh, and uh, I think that especially in this time after COVID, when people rejoice to come together at uh, sporting and music events, uh, uh, I think it will be a grand event all over the world. And uh, uh, in the last day on uh, Independence Day of the state of Qatar on the 18th of December, I'm sure it will be uh, a, a big celebration and all eyes in all countries of the world will be on Qatar. So congratulations uh, on this achievement. Of course, this uh, aggression against Ukraine and the unjust war um, uh, brings terrible consequences, first of all, to the Ukrainian people, uh, but also it has uh, economic and social consequences uh, in the neighborhood and more broadly uh, on the global scale. Uh, so uh, Moldova received the very first wave of refugees uh, about half a million people crossed uh, the Ukrainian-Moldovan border, uh, some in transit and some have decided to stay. At this moment, we have about 80,000 people who are still in Moldova and uh, uh, they are mostly women and children. Uh, so about half of the refugee population in Moldova are children. Uh, so we are uh, working hard uh, to receive them and to provide all the services uh, to these refugees to integrate them in the education and health system uh, and um, to uh, make sure that uh, we support them um, in these difficult times. But of course there are also uh, important economic consequences uh, for Moldova. Uh, the port of Odessa was the most important logistics hub for exports and imports uh, uh, from Moldova. Uh, we uh, also had uh, trade and remittances um, uh, from Ukraine or Russia and Belarus, uh, which has reduced dramatically. Uh, we uh, see this uh, logistics crisis and uh, we have now a lot of exports and re-exports in Ukraine and our infrastructure does not have the capacity to handle. Uh, so we are working with our partners to uh, improve, for example, uh, uh, the crossing of borders uh, for uh, goods uh, and uh, especially agricultural goods and um, uh, to, to, to make sure that, that we, we support the um, uh, the uh, food security, uh, we, that we become a contributor to the food security in the region and, and globally. Uh, but of course, um, this affects our producers. Uh, uh, you know, we uh, are seeing an increase in prices, I think, that is impacting everyone. Uh, and uh, a country that has uh, lower incomes, like Moldova, uh, is impacted even more. So we see 
the consequences of oil price increase and logistics uh, uh, price increase. So we see the consequences of uh, 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 energy price increase. So the gas tariff, for example, went up by six times. Uh, we see the foodstuffs uh, increasing in price and due to all of these factors, inflation in Moldova has reached already 29% and uh, uh, growth will slow down as well. So um, after you know, the COVID pandemic, after the uh, energy crisis, we are now seeing repeated shocks uh, on our economy. And of course, our main concern is how do we support those who are vulnerable and how do we prevent um, the, the, the growth of poverty uh, for uh, our households and uh, for our economy. First of all, we have uh, to find uh, a solution to end the war, uh, and this is the responsibility of the entire international community. Um, right now, there is no apparent way out that would uh, respect uh, international law rules and respect the uh, sovereignty and territorial integrity of Ukraine. Uh, which is very important in order to keep trust and confidence uh, in international law, particularly for smaller countries. Um, and uh, because of this, there is a lot of uncertainty, uh, which makes it very difficult to predict and prepare uh, what will happen next and how the world will readjust post uh, the war in Ukraine. Uh, we, uh, as a country, have made the decision to accelerate our uh, accession to the European Union. Uh, so we have uh, uh, made the request to join the European Union in the beginning of March, and uh, uh, we look forward to uh, the opinion of the Commission in this regard, uh, which is due to uh, come next week, and then the decision of the European Council uh, later uh, in, the, uh, in the month of June. And uh, we very much hope uh, that uh, uh, the European Union will take the decision uh, to grant candidate status uh, to uh, Ukraine and Moldova and Georgia. And uh, you know, we hope that uh, ne negotiations will start uh, with uh, uh, Albania and North Macedonia and Balkan, the, the integration of Balkan countries will accelerate as well. You know, we think that this is um, a very important signal uh, for our people, which are uh, going through a, a difficult time, yet are very much supportive of pro-European reforms, despite all the crises we are moving uh, with advancements on rule of law, combating corruption, uh, you know, consolidating democratic values. So uh, our people need that assurance that uh, if we go through this difficult time, uh, they can uh, see the light at the end of the tunnel and be part of the big family of European states.